Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Fine Details of MOSFET Gate Drive Resistor Losses. I'd like to thank Evgeny Smidochki for his support in the preparation of this presentation. Many thanks to Frenetic Company for sponsoring this video, and they are very nice to offer a free trial to their software, and the details are given in the description section of the video that you are now watching. So I'm focused in this presentation on the losses of resistance of their gate driver. Now this resistor is represented the total resistance, including the driver itself. And the question is, how much power is lost in this resistor so we can select it for proper power dissipation? I'm showing here a MOSFET, and I'm concentrating on the turn on time, and that time they drain will go down at a given fold time, there is some current, and the relevant data for solving the question of losses is this plot here, which is the gate charge and gate voltage. And what we see here is this uh, so-called Miller plateau. At the beginning, as the voltage goes up, we are accumulating charge at the gate, and this is like almost a linear capacitor. It's not exactly, but it's pretty close to. But then we have this flat part, which actually represents a very large capacitance. This is the Miller effect. And then we have another section, which is also sort of a linear capacitor, although there is some nonlinearity in it, as we'll see later on. So the question is, given this data, what will be the power loss of the resistor at turn on? This is the first question I'm posing. Now, the classical solution to this basic power estimation is to say the following. The total power going into the system is the end voltage and the total charge accumulated at the gate. So this product is the total energy that came out of the source times the frequency is the total power, or can you look at the power as the charge times the frequency, this is the average current, times the voltage is the power. So this is the power coming out of the source, and then we know then when charging a capacitor, half of the power goes into the capacitor, and half of it is dissipated in the resistor. So therefore, the power dissipation of the resistor will be P in over 2. So this will be for the on time and off time, because during the off time, the energy of the capacitor is then discharged through the capacitor to zero. And the total power dissipated in the resistances, this could be one resistor or a couple of resistors, is actually P in. So this is the conventional way of calculating the power dissipation of these resistors of, at the gate which is pretty good. The objective of this presentation is to get a more accurate solution and also to gain an intuitive understanding of the process that goes on and the effect of the nonlinearity of the capacitance of the gate. To do this, I'm first of all looking at the issue of nonlinear capacitors. Now, if I plot the charge is a function of voltage. This is the way we represent a capacitor, the accumulating charge for a given voltage, and the ratio of which, of course, is the definition of capacitance, charge over voltage. Then if uh, this relationship is linear, this will be a linear capacitor. If it's nonlinear, like here, this will be a nonlinear capacitor. Now here, we can actually define three types of capacitances. We can talk about the total capacitance, which is the ratio between the total charge at the end over the voltage at this point. So this is the total capacitance. We can talk about the derivative or local capacitance, which is the slope at any given point both of which are, of course, a function of the voltage you are at, at the operating point. But this is not sufficient for energy calculation. For energy, we need another type of capacitance, 
which we call energy related capacitance. So if we have this value, then we can calculate the energy stored in, in the capacitor in the conventional way. This is the voltage squared times the capacitance, but this is now the energy related capacitor, which again, of course, will be a function of the voltage. And this will be, of course, the energy will be V squared times C over two. Now turning to the issue of energy, the energy stored in the capacitor is the integral of V dQ over the range of from zero to a given point, say so from here to here. And this is the energy stored. And if I use the concept of energy related capacitance, then the energy stored is this energy related capacitance times the end voltage square over two. And therefore, this is the value of the energy related capacitance. This is the energy stored at the end, total energy stored times two divided by Vc squared. Now, this integral is this area here. So this area represents the energy stored in the capacitance. The energy that came out of the source is this, the area of this uh, square. And therefore, this part here is actually the energy lost to the resistor, okay? So here we see what is really going on. Now, in this case, the ratio between the stored energy and the energy lost is not one to one as in the case of a linear capacitor. In a linear capacitor, if this is a straight line here, which I'm not showing, then it'll be uh, it, uh, the energy is actually split to half energy to the capacitor and half to losses. If it is a nonlinear capacitor, this is not the case. So this is the energy stored in the capacitor. This is the energy lost to the resistor and the idea of the energy related capacitance is a parameter that you can use to calculate the energy stored at any given voltage. So now I'm coming back to this plot. Now this plot is conventionally drawn this way that we have the voltage here and the charge here, the x axis is, is the charge. Now for capacitance representation, we would like to have the Q here the charge here and the voltage here. So I've sort of turned uh, the plot here such that the coordinates are more compatible with what we are used for capacitances, okay? So this is the same plot, except it has been rotated because the axes now are actually flipped. So in this case, for this particular shape of a behavior, this would be the energy stored in the gate. And this red one is the energy lost. The question whether it will be one to one or more really depends on the endpoint here. Because if the endpoint is here, if you charge it only to this value, then you see that uh, the, there's a lot of energy to the capacitor and less energy to, lost at the resistor. On the other end, if it will be like here, then you'll have more energy lost than the energy stored. So in a nonlinear capacitor, you cannot tell uh, whether uh, the losses are half of the total power, that is, if the loss is equal to the energy stored in the capacitor. It could be either way, depending on the shape of the uh, relationship between the charge and the voltage and, of course, the end point. Now, the power loss, again, will be the input power, power loss to the resistor, will be the input power minus the energy stored in the capacitor times the frequency is power. So let's consider a practical case. This is a plot of the voltage and charge for an IGBT. This is just IGBT. We see here typically the so almost linear capacitance, then the plateau, and then we have this rise again after the voltage of the IGBT, in this case, dropped just about to zero. And the breakpoint is dependent on the voltage. The higher the voltage, the longer will be this uh, Miller plateau because the swing of the, in this case, the collector will be larger. And a larger swing, meaning 
that uh, the plateau will be longer in terms of the amount of charge. Also, there is a sensitivity to the current. This is another, actually, this is a MOSFET. And we see that in this case, what, what I'm showing here is, uh, this is from datasheet, that uh, for different currents, you see the plateau is a different level. So we have, in fact, a family of plots here. And it's not just one plot, depending on the operating point. And the actual plot that uh, you'll be working with depends on the current and the drain to source voltage. So for this plot here, we have calculated the relevant capacitances. And here it is. This was done by Excel based on the definition of the total capacitance and the energy-related capacitance. The energy now will be a function of this energy-related capacitance V square over 2, depending where you are at or the end point. And the plot here is per the definition of the CE, which is the energy stored in the capacitor. So now comparing this plot, which is the capacitance as a function of the voltage, and these are two capacitances, the total capacitance and energy-related capacitor, relating this to the original plot from the datasheet. Now, we see that at low voltages, like here, the capacitance is about 5 nanofarad, and then there is a jump to much higher capacitance because this represents a lar larger capacitance, and this is over a very quickly goes from this value of capacitance, which is the slope, to this value of capacitance, which is the slope, goes very quickly from one point to another. So this and these are the capacitance of this portion here. And then at the higher voltages, at the higher voltages, the capacitance really drop because this point goes up and up, and therefore the ratio is actually becoming smaller. This, this ratio of the Q over V is the total capacitance, and the integral of V dQ will also be going down. What is important to realize is that the total capacitance that is calculated just by Q over V, which is used in the calculation or this basic calculation of the losses, this total capacitance is smaller than the energy-related capacitance, meaning that in reality, more energy is stored in the gate than estimated by this total capacitance. And therefore, in this case, the loss of the resistor is actually smaller than estimated by using the total capacitance. Because if you have a larger amount of energy stored in the gate, the capacitance of the gate, then less energy is lost to the resistor since the input is constant. It is just the related to the total charge and total voltage that you have at the input. Now, going back to the data sheet, we have some information about capacitances. But the information here is for small signal, a given operating point, and we see here the total input capacitance is shown to be about 4.5 nanofarad, and this will be for zero gate voltage, low voltage, and VC of 25 volt. And the point is that it is not a large signal value. It's a small signal value, okay? Now, the total capacitance will be calculated from the total charge. This is just one point from the plot, in fact. And for this particular point of VGE of 15 volt, it's 435 nanocoulomb. This is this value here, 15 volt. So it's 400, depending on the voltage, say this, this is the voltage, 450 nanocoulomb. 
And this resulted in the estimation of the total capacitance as 29 nanofarads. And indeed, in this plot, we find that 15 volt, the total capacitance is indeed 29 nanofarads, so we are okay. Now the energy-related capacitance is higher than that, it's uh, about 40. And this, is, of course, is not given in the data sheet. This is something that you have to work out yourself from the plot of Q and V. So now, what happens throughout the cycle, that is turning the gate on and then off, okay? So we'll be moving from zero up here and then going back again. And in this case, the total energy stored in the gate or the capacitance of the gate is this uh, black uh, shaded uh, part here, while for the on, the losses of the resistance will be this part here, again, depending on the end point, of course. And then during the off time, this energy stored in the capacitance is now lost to the resistor. So that the, the power dissipation of the resistors could be one resistor or it's split into two resistors for on and off. Anyhow, during the off time, all the energy stored in the capacitance of the gate is dissipated by the resistor. So we don't have necessarily equal power dissipation during the on sequence and the off time could be different depending on the operating point and the shape of this uh, curve could be different of course the plateau could be shorter or longer and therefore the ratio between the power lost during the on to the resistor and off time could be different so this brings me to the end of this presentation i hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future thank you very much